Being discarded is traumatic. It is one of the most painful experiences that anybody can endure. Both avoidance and narcissists are notorious for discarding partners, but there are differences between a narcissistic discard and an avoidant discard. First, what is a discard? A discard is not a normal breakup. Sometimes breakups need to happen. Discards never need to happen. A discard is blindsiding. It is traumatic. It is unilateral. The person being discarded is deprived of a voice or a say in the breakup. Also, there's been really no communication. The person being discarded was never given an opportunity to address any issues in the relationship. There's usually no conversation that happens. The person that's being thrown out is being thrown out and quite quickly. They're given little to no explanation as to why the relationship is ending. And to make matters worse, they are often shown no empathy during the discard. The person being discarded feels like they're being thrown in the trash. They feel like they're being treated as if they never even mattered. That's why it's called a discard. So let's get into the differences. First, let's get into what an avoidant discard is and why they do it. When an avoidant discards a partner, it is done largely out of fear. This is a person that has a very specific set of fears. And these fears go back to childhood. This is a person that was emotionally neglected by their parents for caretakers. Also, their feelings were routinely dismissed. If they expressed a negative emotion, they were dismissed, rejected, if not even reprimanded. The end result is a person that learns that vulnerability is not safe, that expressing themselves is not safe. They grow up to feel unlovable because they weren't given the love that they needed as a child. They carry these insecurities forward. So being vulnerable in a relationship, things like emotional intimacy, it triggers their fears and makes them feel unsafe and makes them feel like they're inevitably going to get hurt and abandoned. Also, they don't communicate their wants and needs because they learned as a child, if you express that kind of stuff, you're gonna get rejected, you're gonna get dismissed. So rather than communicate this stuff to their partner, they bottle it in. And bottling it in can also lead to resentment. So as a relationship gets closer, they can feel very unsafe because it's getting too vulnerable. Also, they can build resentment when their wants and needs aren't being met, but they never communicated it. Also, any kind of disagreement or conflict can seem insurmountable to the avoidant, no matter how small it is, because they learned that they couldn't express themselves, and if they did, it led to conflict, so they fear conflict greatly because they associate it with rejection and abandonment. So even if it's a very small disagreement, it seems overwhelming and insurmountable to the avoidant. This is a person that really gets triggered by healthy relationship behaviors. It makes them feel like they're going to get abandoned and rejected. So it's much safer for them to do the abandoning than to risk being abandoned themselves. So they will deactivate. They take their feelings for their partner. They suppress them. They bury them. They don't allow themselves to access their feelings for their partner when they're triggered. Emotional distance is what makes the avoidant feel safe. So they push their partner away. And this can even mean an abrupt discard, ending of the relationship. Then the avoidant will feel relief and they will feel safe again. When they are triggered, they completely shut down and detach from their emotions because emotions weren't safe anyway and they avoid. That includes avoiding self-reflection, avoiding processing these emotions, avoid looking within to see where these fears are coming from, and they really struggle to give coherent explanations to their partner as to why they're ending the relationship because they avoid facing those feelings. They avoid reflecting on it. And this is done largely out of fear. Now it can be very painful because when they shut down, they really can act like they never cared about the person that they're with, but it's because they are in a heightened state of anxiety and fear. They don't intend to hurt their partner, but they become so self-absorbed when they're triggered that they don't exactly go out of their way to not hurt their partner. But it's not done with the intention of hurting. Okay, so now let's get into narcissistic discards. 
a narcissist will discard a partner for a completely different reason. Narcissists go into relationship really for one thing, narcissistic supply. Narcissistic supply is the attention, validation, adoration, and power and control that a narcissist feels entitled to. Early in the relationship, you're the shiny new toy. You're making them feel good. You're giving them all that supply and that attention. And the dopamine is flowing and the narcissist is feeling great. But over the course of the relationship, you reveal your flaws. That's unacceptable to a narcissist. And you're not the shiny new toy anymore. So eventually, you have outlived your use. You're no longer a satisfactory source of supply. They are bored of you. They are bored of your supply. So a narcissist will go up and line up a new source of supply because they always need to get that supply coming in because there's a, a void, a black hole inside of their heart. So when they have that new supply secured, they're done with you. They don't need you anymore. So they throw you out as if you never even mattered. And it's not out of fear. It's because they're done with you. And if you show emotion, the narcissist will get annoyed. But the narcissist will often do things for the intent of hurting you. They will say cruel things. They will be very nasty and very cutting. Typically, an avoidant does not do this when they're discarding. But the narcissist does. The reason they do it is that they get supply from hurting you. If they see you in pain, it makes them feel powerful because power and control are important to a narcissist. If they can affect you, if they can hurt you, it means they have power over you, that they are relevant, that they can control you. After the discard, it is also very common for a narcissist to go on a smear campaign against you, going to mutual friends and family and acquaintances and telling them often false stories about how they are the victim of you and how traumatic the relationship was and how awful you were to them. So that way they get perceived as the good guy and you get perceived as the bad guy. And this gets them more attention. They become the victim of you and that gives them more supply. They genuinely do not care about the pain, harm, and suffering that they cause you. So the level of cruelty, overt cruelty is generally so much so much higher with a narcissist. Now, ultimately, healthy people do not discard partners. Yes, breakups sometimes need to happen. That's a part of life. Not everybody's meant to be together. But healthy people do not discard. Ultimately, if you're the one being discarded, it doesn't really matter all that much what the intent is of the person because if they're throwing you out in the trash as if you never even mattered, you're still being thrown in the trash. The end result is that you are still being treated that way. Ultimately, you're in a relationship with the person's behaviors, not their intent and not their potential. You're in a relationship with how they treat you. And discarding is not a nice way to treat somebody. And a discard is always a reflection of the person doing the discard. It is never a reflection of the person who got discarded. Nobody deserves to be discarded.